And there it is. Just got to be patient. Whatever you do, do not start pushing on this and getting frustrated like I do. <laughs>
I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know there was a protective peel-off film. That's good to know. Had no idea. This thing's a pain. Let me see here. Okay. Let me try this now. She gave me a pair of scissors and said, make sure you give me these back. I don't know what the deal was with that, but... All right, that ain't a perfect circle, but I don't care, and you'll see why. Let me just see if it's, yeah, it's pretty close. Now, I want to see if it fits in here. It should. Oh, I can't pick it up now. There we go. Because we're going to be gluing it down in there. And that will be, you know, the red light, technically speaking. So that'll work good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut the other two, and I'll be right back. So I have them cut. I'm going to try to not get in front of you. As you could see, they're not perfect circles, but I really don't care. They're going inside of this. You can't see that anyhow. I'm sure if it was Heather, they, they would have come out pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, take our super glue, because I do have to fix this because it's, you know, broke. But this, there's no pressure on this, so I figure instead of trying to search for one, I can glue it and it'll be perfectly fine. And we'll let it dry while we're doing the rest of the Speedo. So, okay, I need, I got my little brush. I just got to puncture the top. I'm going to puncture the top of the glue. And I think I want to put the glue on something and then brush on to those little pieces. So... Let me find something I don't care about. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. And that way I can hopefully brush it on. If that makes sense. Turn it like that. And then I can uh, put it in the cracks on this. So let's, you're not going to be able to see this real good. Give me a minute here. I know. Some things, it is just hard to film, but I want to get it on there. Hold on, I'll show you in a second. I know, this stinks. I'm trying to see. Should be okay that way. What I'm trying to do is put it on here so it don't pull apart. And that brush hardened up quick. So I'm just going to dab it in the cracks. Like I said, there's no pressure on this, so it really doesn't matter. There we go. So hopefully that holds. So we'll give that a couple minutes. I'll be right back in a second, actually. Now what I did, it's all glued together. This is dry now. It didn't take long. That super glue takes about two minutes, three minutes. So that's all glued. Not perfectly neat, but you'll never see this inside the speedometer. So now what I get to do is brush some glue in there and set each piece in. Now, if you buy the same stuff I did for any reason on Amazon, these have film on each side of protective film, which is nice. So make sure to peel it off because I almost didn't. Okay. All right. This isn't going to be fun. Let me give it a try here. I got my brush. I'm just going to put a bunch of glue on there to dip into. I know this is a bad angle right now. Give me a second. Okay, we'll do this one. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were in view. Okay. All right, I got to get 
was hoping it would stick to my finger. It didn't. Okay. Might get in your way for a second here. Of course it's stuck to my finger now. Okay. So we stuck it right in there. And it's laying on the glue. So once that dries, what I can do is brush a little over top of it to hold it. I know I go overboard with stuff. Oh. Ah, see what happened there. I should have left it alone. I should have Heather doing this crap. I hate it. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so let me put a layer of glue. I don't have you in here. Yeah. This will be a crappy part of the film, obviously. Okay, I gotta get that piece. Set it in there. Like that. I wanna run some glue around the outside of it to hold it in place. I'm getting glue everywhere. <laughs> That's okay. The other one that we're going to do, they asked me to do the one with the fuel gauge. I believe they are different inside of there. So let me, before my brush dries out and gets hard, there's no pressure on these either. So I'm trying to get that glue off of there. Oh, well, look, it's sticking to my finger. What a mess. I'm not good at little stuff like this. Get that in there. Push it on with this. Right like that. And a little bit of glue around the ends. There we go. Me. There. Well, that should be fine. Because once it's all together, you're never going to see that anyhow. So there we go. They're in there. I got some super glue on the lens part, but once the ball lights up, it isn't going to much matter anyhow. So that should be good. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Here, here we go. Here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's, I was holding them in place in there. So those are done. Now let's get back to the big part. So those are going to dry for a while. Make sure when you're messing with the back of this that you're not setting it down and breaking the needle. All right. I just noticed something, by the way. I know. I'm always cutting off. There's the one from my 68. I believe this is 67 and back. But look, this one starts at 10, technically, a little below it. And that one starts at zero on the right. I just caught that. I don't know. Maybe y'all knew. So what I'm going to do here, let me back the camera up a hair. I'm going to take this number two bit. Now, when you are trying to turn, that's a number two square bit. One of the club members told me I could use, and he was right. When you're doing this and you want to see the speedometer work, turn it in reverse. Do not turn it forward. And what I mean by in reverse is put your drill counterclockwise, okay? Counterclockwise, and I'll explain why in a minute. But this seems to spin easy, so I don't know. Let me get this in there first. I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if I'm wasting my time taking the rust apart, but... Ooh, we're flying. See what I mean? Seems to spin fairly easy. I was going to take this apart... But I may not need to. There's a shaft that goes down through here. And you can take this cluster all off, take it apart, do the whole thing. But as easy as this is spinning, I might be just wasting time, technically. If it was frozen up, that'd be one thing. I am going to spray some PB on there. But we're going to go ahead and, since I figure it is a waste of time, pull that off when it's not frozen up. Because I know you take that off... Then you pull this off, 
take the gear out, but I'm going to brush some grease on these and spin them so the grease gets through. But one thing I am going to do is spray some PB down inside of there. See what I mean? Here, let me get a pointer. Down inside of this shaft because it will come down through there. So give me one second. A word of caution. Do not spray it all over the place because if you get it on the face of this, you could cause a problem. You know, with uh, it coming off. So I'm just kind of a little wee bit. I want it to get down inside of here. If this was frozen up, make no mistake. I would be taking these little tangs and pulling this cluster off and pulling this shaft apart in here and greasing it. So let me wipe the excess off. And it did what I wanted it to do. It went down inside of here, down in this shaft. Now, should I take it apart and put the proper grease in? Probably. But I'm not right now. I just don't see a point in it because it spun so easily. Now, if you want to, you can take all these off of there, the digits and everything, and clean all them numbers up. Or reset them to zeros if you're doing a restoration project. So, all right, I'm going to put grease on all of these, a little coating of grease. Put the drill on, and you'll see what I do. I'll get it to spin so it goes through all the gears. So, let me get set up. Give me one second. All right, so what I have is some grease. And it's a very smooth grease. You can use sewing machine oil, 3-in-1 oil, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to just dab a little bit of grease down inside of these. I got PB on there, so obviously the grease is going to give me trouble now. All right. A little bit up here around the teeth. I mean, you don't have to go crazy, but do what you want, you know. I just do things my way. That PB made this, like, where the grease don't want to stick, and I tried wiping it off. But it was important that I got the PB down into this cylinder here. That way I didn't have to take it apart, because it really wasn't sticking, so. Okay. Let's put the drill in. With our number two square bit, thank you to who brought that up in the comments. And keep it in reverse. Woo. Counterclockwise. Let me, don't worry, I'll spin it around. Give me one second. There we go. And. Whee. Okay. It's nice and smooth. So, that's the way you want it. This is, this is nice. I was going to paint the little uh, needle on here, but I think I'm going to leave it alone. It has that old nostalgical look. I mean, I could simply, it's so easy, it's elevated away from everything. I could paint it easy, but I'm going to leave it alone. I actually like it. I think it looks nice. So Now, here's why I said to spin the drill in reverse, counterclockwise. If not, you're going to break your needle. Picture your cable comes down and goes through your wheel. When your wheel is turning and you are going forward, okay, this is turning with the wheel counterclockwise. And then it goes up into the speedometer counterclockwise. Now, can you bust stuff up? Probably not, because if you drive your car in reverse, it's going to spin the opposite way. But I wouldn't press your luck with a drill at the workbench. So now what we're going to do is put this part together, which is a real pain in the butt. Now, when you go to wipe this off, just use a microfiber cloth and just a little, if you have to, warm water or something. Don't saturate this. Don't start wiping the numbers off. Do it how you see fit. This is perfect here. It's beautiful. But I wiped it off, but I didn't use any type of detergent. No abrasive, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just wipe it off gently and clean it up, okay? I could have, like I said, I could have repainted the needle, cleaned up the digits, but I think this looks nice. I really do. But it's just a personal thing. My other one is a little lighter. This one here I'm going to take apart because of the fuel gauge, but I really feel bad to do another video back-to-back -back with speedometer stuff, but we'll see. So we're going to do this first. Now, here's the tricky part. Here is your high beam. 
right there, indicator, okay? This actually slides inside of here. Come on, dum-dum. Like that. And it goes up against there. So the light shines directly at that, like a little tunnel you can see inside of here. Maybe you can't. <laughs> but you see what I mean. So when this gets slid into this housing, okay, like this, it's got to slide into there and go onto that. So this is the tricky part that isn't a whole lot of fun. Sorry, I had to stop a minute. Lily was barking at something, and she's barking. It's real. So... We're going to look inside of here. You're going to see this, and it needs to go on to there. So this kind of isn't a whole lot of fun doing this part. So I'm going to try to look in there. You're not going to be able to do it with me and make sure it goes on the sleeve because there's really not a way of seeing this. Well, I can look down through here. Here, let me try to see this a second. I don't want to push. Don't, don't press on stuff. You're not going to be able to see this with me, but it'll make sense when you're doing it because that silver tube in there has to go onto that inside. Looks like it's on its way there. It was hard to get out onto this. So I got to take a peek in there. Looks like it's on it. And there it is. Just got to be patient. Whatever you do, do not start pushing on this and getting frustrated like I do. <laughs> All right. I needed to raise that up a little bit. So we have this in. So now we're going to turn it around and we're going to put these two screws in to hold that face inside of there. Let me, uh, yeah, there we go. That worked good. Okay, give me one second. Now, when you do these things, take a moment and clean up the screw heads. It's a nicer appearance in all honesty. And make sure you drop one first. If you do that, it'll go a lot smoother. I'm holding the front gently of the face so it stays in. Sorry, my filming skills are not professional. I'm working behind the camera and reaching around for a better view. That way you kind of feel like you're doing it, you know. If that makes any sense. Instead of the camera off to the side, I'm learning over the years. Doesn't mean I'm great, but I'm learning. So we'll go ahead and we'll snug these up. Now don't put a screwdriver on the size of your foot and crank it. Okay, just snug it up tight. A little past snug. You want it tight, but... Okay, so far, what have we done then? We got her inside of there. Wow, I'm really excited about this. Looks very, very nice. And he here's the thing. I know I didn't take the back of it off completely, but I didn't need to. If your speedometer is frozen up and doesn't want to turn, don't force it, okay? You will remove the assembly and take that apart, and you can disassemble it completely and do the shaft. I mean, if you guys want, and gals, I can get a different speedometer and take it apart and dissect it completely, but don't take things apart that aren't broken. Sorry, I know I pause a lot and say things. I'm just trying to remind you folks of everything that I can think of. So I'm sorry, let's get back on this. Now we have the piece where the bulbs go into that will go into the bottom for your turn signals and your indicators for your oil and your generator or alternator whatever you have. Now, I already cleaned up the contacts. Make sure that you do. 
clean them up real nice. Use a little brass brush or something. I used a little, uh, what are they called? scotch Bright pad. And I took a piece, curled it up, and got it down in there. Because you want all these contacts nice and clean. So make sure you do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some bulbs. Now I, I know you didn't want to watch me do dumb stuff. So I already wire wheeled, cleaned everything up real nice, cleaned the bulbs up, put them in. You can do that stuff on your own, obviously. So we're going to push that in there. Push that in there. So one is your oil, and one is your alternator or generator. And then we have another one here that will be for your turn signals. So you have your three in there. Make sure you clean these all up really nice because you'll put it together and say, it's not working. So now you can see your bulbs are in there. Make sure everything's nice and tidy and clean. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to put on our little rubber cap. Depends what one you have, if it has this or not. They're all different. So that's on there. Okay. Make sure it's on good so it don't pop off. Let me double check it. Now what I did do is I didn't like the way this felt snapping on there and only use a dab don't go crazy and I put a little bit of glue to hold this on because the last thing you want is this inside the speedometer housing and the lid to pop off so let's get my finger stuck on there now I can get it back off if I had to but I went ahead and put a little bit of glue on to hold it in place there's no pressure on these I did go ahead and turn the speedometer housing upside down just for filming reasons, honestly. So I'm going to... What you have done is you just learned by my mistake because I took this back apart. When that's all together, that doesn't fit through there. Guess what I get to do? Take it back apart. Give me one second. I absolutely refuse to edit out mistakes. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry. But we are going to go ahead. We are going to put this into place. Come on, get on there. There we go. And I'm going to put, these are your indicator bulbs. I'm going to put the two little screws in. So give me a second here. I'm going to set it down this way. It'll be easier. You know, I don't remember taking it apart in the order that I'm putting it back together. But it is what it is. Come on, get on there. I always dread working with tiny little screws. There we go. There's one started. For some reason, I just don't remember it coming apart that way. But it did, obviously. But like I said, I don't edit out mistakes. I don't like doing it because if you make a mistake, you're going to think, well, it went perfect for Slate every time. I don't do that. It's not who I am. All right. So we're going to take this and flip it over. Your indicator lights are on there. I'm going to go ahead and set this into place. Okay, like I did before, I'm going to put a dab of glue on it, so give me a moment. So here. I went ahead and I put a little bit of glue around the perimeter and then snapped it on. It doesn't even really snap on, it's rubber. It kind of expands and sits on there. But I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes and then it'll be in place. It's not going to come off. And then that'll be your indicator lights behind the... Uh, speedometer facing so it should be yeah it's on there okay so next guess what we get to do again we get to put the speedometer back together it's okay it happens once again we've got to slide this in here see where this goes see the little entrance for it we're going to 
do this again. You gotta get that set into place so it sleeves on. That is really hard to do on film, but you've seen it the first time around, is you have to get that sleeve for the high beam indicator onto this sleeve while this is fitting through. So it's a really pain in the butt to do, but we did it. That's what matters. All right, I'm going to speed this part up since you already watched me put two screws in. There we go. So learn from my lesson. Don't be a dum-dum. And there we go. So far, so good. Have our new uh, gels. You can see the colors for the indicator and the alternator. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the unfun part. And I'm sorry, should have showed you there. You're gonna clean up your other bulbs. That's for your indicator. There was paint around there. You know, for your high beam indicator. Okay, then you have a bulb up there. So let's go ahead and get the face all cleaned up. This is this is coming out nice. I'm going to probably throw it on a Samba Classified because I'm not going to have use for this one. But let's get the face of it done now. Okay, I did not pull this apart. I didn't feel the need to. Once I clean the glass up, you'll see why. I'm going to clean the chrome up a little bit on it, although once it goes into the dash, you don't really see that. But here's the one that I did take apart for my 68. And what you can do is, you know, sand this down, clean the bezel, because the bezel is what shows, you know, inside of it, and then clean up your glass. But there's rubbers in here and a little gasket, and I just didn't feel the need to with this one. So let me get something to clean the chrome up with here. What I'm going to use is polishing compound, not rubbing compound. Quad O steel wool. It's almost like human hair. I'm going to go ahead and let me put a little dab. Come on. Whoop. Butthead. A little dab. I wanted a smaller dab than that, but it didn't work out that way. Okay. Now don't be rubbing down your uh, your glass. I want to just clean this up. I know you see it on the glass, but I'm not rubbing the glass. Now you can't really see this chrome, but I still want to clean it up the best that I can. Let me get a little bit off it there. And it's sticking to it, of course. Just getting the heavy stuff off of here, that's all. Heather was going to do a film for me, and she can do it in the near future on cleaning rusty chrome and stuff up, but just haven't had the time with doing other things. And I'm going to ask you if you want to see a different film on something else. It'll be an extra. I can do it next week. But I'll leave it up to you folks. Let me wipe this off a minute. Oh, yeah, I can tell right now. I'm at the very nice. Okay, now you see some here. I'm not that worried. That's going behind the dash in the trunk. But I wanted to get some of this heavy stuff cleaned up like that so let me clean the glass up you know how to clean glass so give me one second here as you can see the glass is nice and clean this is the crap part I'm trying to put this back on here so i get it you have to line up this with this i don't know if i'll have to reposition the camera to do it Hopefully not, because I'd like to do this right in front of the camera. Wait a minute. It seemed a little too dark there. Okay. I 
I may have to bend the lip out a little more. I was trying not to, if I can help it. That's one there. I literally, you got to watch you break your glass. Hold it off without bending all that crumb. And I got it. Believe it or not. There we go. Now, here's what I like to do. But you do what you want. Wow, does that look great? Okay, we're going to make it operate too. So hang in there. Now, give me one second here. I want to get my fingers all over everything. I'm going to try something. Now, what I did do, okay, and you can do this if you want to. As you've seen, it snapped on tightly. Now, when I was putting it on, for example, I was pressing on the housing and snapping this down over. Now, what I'm going to finish doing is I like to take a little punch that is actually flat. Okay, now you don't have to do this. And I'm trying to get it close here. I put it right here and I tap it lightly. This is what I do all the way around. And it it seals it back on better, you know, so it don't come loose. But you don't have to do that. But remember, you have pried this and bent the chrome out slightly. So it's probably best to bend it back under so it holds tight. Of course, once you put it in the car and press it up against, it isn't going to go anywhere. But that's just me. Now, you're wondering why I have a light lit up under a rag. Or maybe you're not. So there you go. I have a light I have it wrapped up with a microfiber because it's an extremely bright light. But there you go. Those look a lot better, as you can see. Isn't that nice? Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to put the drill on it in reverse with the number two square bit. And, oh, wait, let me put the bulbs back. Now what I'm going to check is the high beam indicator to know that that sleeve went in place. Now I know it did. I pulled that bulb back out, and as you can see, there's your high beam indicator. Well, there's the slot for it. <laughs> so I'm going to snap the bulbs back in place real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and put the drill on in reverse. Also, before you install this in the car, you have lights here, lights here, lights here. Now would be the time to switch to LED if you choose to, or check your bulbs and make sure they're working. All right, give me a second here. And it's drill time. There we go. We're going really fast, huh? Okay. So there you have it. Let's take a look around it. I could have cleaned the chrome a little better, but I didn't feel like taking the time out. It's hidden anyhow. Housing looks nice. All the contacts are cleaned. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, I'm going to go over a couple of things, what's coming up next week. But this was your speedometer cleaning restoration, a complete restoration with the pulling that bottom apart, like I told you. But I didn't need to on this, so it's fine. But I think it come out pretty nice. I'd be proud to have it at my dash. It actually looks pretty good. So. That's that. Make sure you do the, the back real nice, clean everything. I like it. I definitely am happy with the outcome. And since I got behind, I'm going to go ahead this next video and how to remove undercoating. Uh, I'm going to use a heat gun. I'm going to do a couple different things. We're going to strip this all down. I'll speed a lot of the film up and we're going to spray it and this side will be done. Then we'll move to the next. After we rotate around the car, things are going to these are going to kind of come together pretty fast. So that's what I'm doing next. Now, something I'm going to do, and I probably won't do it on film. I don't see a point in it. I already put my guide rails on, if you remember. And I'm going to drill the rivets, pop them back off, and paint that area. Paint the guide rails, and then put them back on. And I'm talking about the guide rail channel seals for the trunk. Somebody posted and it bothered me after I primed that area and put the channels on and said, you should have painted all that. I did, da 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 So that bothered me. I'm going to take it apart, spray, put it all back together. 
So I'll probably do like a short film on that, you know, or show you what I did do. So, okay. I hope everybody enjoyed part two. I hope everybody had an amazing weekend and I will see you on the next one.